Hi, this is Larry the Barberman of LarryTheBarberman.com and today we are going to discuss zero gapping both the Andis Masters and the Andis Fade Masters. Now this uh, zero gapping can be quite challenging because first and foremost we have to set the clipper itself in order for it to be able to be zero gapped. Now in order to do this we have to bring uh, the main blade up closer to the top blade first and foremost and then after we've carried out that then we have to go through the process of actually tightening it up. So with that said let's get down to it. In order to zero gap a Andis Fade Master you're going to need a small flathead screwdriver. You're also going to need a very high grade Phillips screwdriver with a shallow top because the screws are quite shallow but they're wide at the same time so you need the correct screwdriver in order uh, to avoid ruining the uh, clipper screws on top. You're also going to need a star screw or a torque screw as they call it. These are the three requirements you will need in order to uh, carry out this procedure. Okay, so let's get down to it. Small flat head screwdriver. First we're going to remove the belly from the top and the bottom of the hair clipper. So we just use the flathead screwdriver. Make sure that you work on a corrugated rubber mat or a towel to ensure that you don't lose the screws. So that's what we do first and foremost. Give that a tap to take your belly off. Right, now inside of the Andis Master you have two torque screws and a washer here and there's a slightly darker piece of metal here which is called the fork connector. Now as I said to you earlier we need to move the bottom blade closer to the top blade. When we loosen the fork and we um, move the fork that's what we're doing, we're moving that bottom blade closer to the top blade. So what we're going to do, we're now going to use the star screw and loosen that these two screws slightly, not too much just slightly and like I said I'm not sure if you can see it there I'll take a picture of this and uh, highlight what is what now we need to push the fork plate like as I said that's going to push the bottom blade so what we do we just use a f now we've loosened it I might need to loosen it more because it's not moving Now I've loosened it. I don't know if the camera is showing, but the blade is actually moved up. And the trick is, you can use this part here, which is the armature. The metal is a different color. You're gonna use that as a guide. So you want it the equal height from the left to the right, so the blade stays straight and it's not slanted. So I'm just gonna work with that now. Right, and for me, that is straight. Now the trick is to gently lower the clipper. Go back to your star screw, and what you want to do is actually move from the left to the right gently, because now that you've set the position, you want it to stay straight. So you've got to do nice, gentle movements with, and just slightly increase the pressure every time, because we don't want that bottom blade to move now that we've set it. So just a little turn of the left one, a little turn of the right one gently. So we're just basically increasing the pressure to prise the two blades closer and closer together before, oh sorry, the plate onto the armature gently. So now this has kept its position. I can actually keep applying more and more pressure every time knowing I'm not going to move it and knowing the cutting blade's going to stay straight. Okay, so that's all done now. The blade is in, uh, has moved higher. So now that we've done that, we can put the belly back on as I'm comfortable that I've, I've, I've created enough height to bring the cutting blade uh, closer to the um, 
combing blade. Yeah, the and this masters and fade masters are very different from all other clippers. With the wall, you can just basically bring it straight up. Uh, you can adjust it without going through that actual procedure there. Okay, so now we've got the height. We now need to tweak it. And how we're going to tweak it is by loosening these two screws. And in order to do that, we're going to use the shallow yet uh, big Phillips screwdriver of high grade and high quality because you don't want it to ruin the screw. So here, you just loosen them slightly because what we're going to have to do now, like I said, we're going to have to tweak them into position. So we want to use the, we want to get them at the maximum tightness so at the same time we can adjust the blades. So that's where I've got it right now. Well, I thought I did, but I didn't. Just need to loosen it a bit more. And a bit more there. And then we're going to basically pull them down into position. So I'm just using my thumb there. And then we just begin the tightening process again gently from left to right so we don't move or disturb the position of the blade oh and just in case you don't know this is the bottom blade this is the top comb blade and i've basically brought them parallel but just offset the bottom blade slightly so it's not exactly the same height but nearly the same height because you don't want the cutting blade going over the comb blade or your client's going to get cut yeah good so back to the thing, like I said, just increase the pressure and move from left to right in the tightening process. And every time you tighten, you check and adjust it if you need to adjust it. And as you get tighter down, and this is quite tight now, I can basically flatten, put that flat on the a mat and apply more pressure. Because when I'm applying more pressure now, I know the blade's not going to move because they're, 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 A, they're in a straight position and B, they've been tightened enough not to move when I apply more pressure. So I'll just do a double check. Yep, and that all looks good to me. I'm going to basically take a photograph of this blade so you can get really close in and see what my zero gap uh, consists of. So that's the zero gap process done. We now want to basically do a check to ensure that this is not going to cut the client when it goes on to when you go onto the shop floor with it. So how I'm going to do that, I'm going to power it up and use my forearm to basically test that it's not going to open my skin. If it doesn't open my skin, then it won't open your client's skin. Your clients stay happy and you get a closer, tighter cut with a fade master. Now because I'm in the UK, I need to uh, change the frequency and the voltage of this clipper because it's American. I've been using the frequency 60 hertz converter, which does just that and stops this from making a horrible clattering noise and gives you a good performance just as though you was in America. So we will power up the Andis Masters. There we go. So, so as you can see, that's running nice and smooth and seamless. I then turn it uh, on its back and basically just test it on my skin. As you can see, it's not opening my skin. So that for me is done. That's your zero gap process finished. So from Larry the Barber Man, I hope you found this demonstration helpful. If you did, I would ask that you subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks on how you can alter, repair and modify your barbering tools for better performance. For now, Larry the Barber Man, thank you.